In this video, we're going to have a look at the first 10 questions, which are the multiple choice questions from the 2016 HSC Mathematics Tuner exam. Okay, the first question. For the angle theta, sine theta equals 7 over 25 and cos theta equals negative 24 on 25. Which diagram best shows the angle theta? So, the truth about this question is that we don't particularly care what the values of the sine theta and the cos theta are. We actually only care about the sine in front of them, and by sine I mean S-I-G-N, whether it's positive or negative. So, from the first bit here, sine theta is 7 on 25, positive 7 on 25. Now, since it's positive 7 on 25, it has to be in either the first or the second quadrant. Okay, because remember, we have all stations to central, that's all our trig functions are positive here, only sine is positive, only tan, only cos. So if sine has to be positive, then we can't be in the third or the fourth quadrant. So I'm in either the first or the second. Now how do I distinguish between the two? Well, I use this bit of information here. I know that cos theta has to be negative, so it can't be in the first quadrant where all of the, um, all of the trig functions are positive. So therefore it must be in the second quadrant so it's not this one, it's not this one, it's not this one, it's B. So our answer is B. Okay? Part 2, or question 2. In a raffle, 30 tickets are sold and there is one prize to be won. What is the probability that someone buying 6 tickets wins the prize? So I buy 6 out of 30. So I have a 1 in 5 chance. That's pretty simple. That's C. Okay, question three. Which diagram best represents the graph of the parabola y equals three minus quantity of x minus two squared? Okay, so this is a multiple choice question. So one of the, st the strategies we have is just eliminating uh, answers which are obviously wrong. Now I know here that this is going to be a concave down parabola because if I expand this out, I'm going to have a negative x squared. Now maybe it's best if I actually expand it out, so that will be minus x squared minus 4x plus 4, which will be negative x squared plus 4x and minus 1. Okay, so clearly it's going to be concave down. I can eliminate a and d. Now I have to distinguish between these two. Now how can I, how can I do that? Well, one thing that I can notice is that option b has some solutions. It crosses the x-axis, which means it has a solution. has two solutions, in fact. And C has no solutions because it never crosses the x-axis. So if I can determine if this equation, or this function or equation, has a solution or not, I'll be able to um, eliminate one of them and then eventually get my answer. So how can I know if something has a solution? Well, I can have a look at the discriminant. So the discriminant here is going to be b squared minus 4ac, which is b squared is 4, so 4 squared, which is 16 minus 4 times negative 1 times negative, or negative 1 again. So I have 16 minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 1, that's going to give me minus 4, and so I have 12, and it's greater than 0. So if the discriminant is greater than 0, that means I do have two solutions, actually. I, have, I know that there is a solution which exists, and since it's greater than zero, there's going to actually be two distinct solutions. But the point is that we can eliminate this because this has no solutions, and we know that this will have a solution. So eliminate C, and my answer is B. Question four, which diagram shows the graph of an odd function? Now, here's the key, it's an odd function, so I know that there's going to be some sort of symmetry when I look at its graph. What kind of symmetry is that? It's going to be symmetric about the origin. Symmetric about the origin. So I can rotate this and see which graph is going to look the same. And in this case, it's going to be A. Okay, so that's what we mean by symmetry about the origin. If we can rotate it 180 degrees, it's going to still look the same. And the only case here is A. So A is our correct answer. Okay. 
question five. What is the derivative of log of cos x? Now, when we find derivatives of logs, the way we do that, let's suppose that we have the log of f of x, some function, and I want to find the derivative of that. That's going to be equal to the derivative of the function, of the inside function, divided by the original function. So in my case, my function is cos, my inside function is cos. So, finding the derivative of cos, that's going to be, let's do that, d dx of log of cos x. Now, what's the derivative of cos? That's minus sine divided by cos. Sine divided by cos is tan, and I have a minus out the front, so my answer is going to be minus 10x. Okay, so b is the answer here. The next one. What is the period of the function f of x equals tan 3x? Okay, now if I just consider tan x, what's, what can I know about that? Well, the period of tan x has a period of what? Has a period of pi. Period is equal to pi. Now, what does having a 3x here mean? That means that I'm going to fit three tan functions inside my period. Or in other words, this is the frequency. So the tan occurs three times within this period. So if I want the period of this thing here, that means I would have to divide my original period by three. So the answer is going to be a pi divided by three. All right, here I have question seven. The circle centered at O, or the origin, has a radius five. Arc AB has a length 7, as shown in the diagram. And there's our diagram. What is the, shape, the area of the shaded sector OAB? Okay, so I know there are two formulas that I will need to use. I know that the area of a sector is going to be a half r squared theta. Now, I have my r, that's 5, but I don't have my theta. How can I work that out? Well, I know another formula that says that the length of an arc is equal to the radius times the angle which it subtends. So I can rewrite this formula as theta equals L on R and then substitute that into this equation and I have A equals a half R squared times L on R which equals a half R L. Okay and now I can substitute these values in because I know what my r is, that's 5, and I know what l is, that's 7, that's the length of the arc. So I have 35 divided by 2, and my answer is a. Okay, next one. How many solutions does the equation cos, or the absolute value of cos 2x equal to 1, have for 0 between, or have for x between 0 and 2 pi? Okay, so this one is going to involve a bit of thinking. There are a few ways to do it, but I think that the best way to do it would be by drawing a graph. So I want to draw the graph of cos 2x and the absolute value of that. So first let me draw cos 2x. Now, as I was saying before with the tan function, this number here tells me how many times I fit one period or one uh, oscillation within the original period. So the original period of cos, of cos x, that has a period of 2 pi. So I need to fit two of these, of these graphs within that period, because now I'm graphing cos 2x. So in doing that, let me just draw, when I'm, I'm drawing below here as dotted, you'll see why in a moment. So that is one entire revolution or period of just cos x, but since I've got cos 2x, I need to fit 2 in, so I do it again. And this is a very rough sketch. But this is right here, cos of x, but since I'm taking the abs, sorry, this is cos of 2x, if I label this as 2 pi, this would be pi, and obviously this is 0. 
Now, since I'm taking the absolute value, everything gets flipped up and becomes positive. So all these things that I've drawn as dotted below the x-axis are going to actually come up above the x-axis. And I should also say that it's oscillating between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so although my diagram's pretty poorly drawn, these all touch exactly once if I draw a line from 1 across a horizontal line. So this is my graph y equals cos, or the absolute value of cos 2x. And since I have this as my graph, I can now read how many times it will intercept the line y equals 1, because that's what I'm doing. I'm solving cos, the absolute value of cos 2x equal to 1. So how many times is that? Well, assuming that I've got a nicely drawn graph, it would be once here, once here at the very top, once there, once there, and once there. And that's the, the entire graph between 0 and 2 pi, so that's 5 times. So my solution is going to be D. Alright, question 9. What is the value of the integral from negative 3 to 2 of the absolute value of x plus 1 dx? Again, there are two ways to do this, and I think that the um, geometrical or graphical approach is the best way. So let's draw our function. Our function is y equals x plus 1, so let's draw that. Okay. That's very lopsided, but it's very rough, so it's okay. We're not getting marked on our, on our drawing skills here. We just have to get the right answer. So, the absolute value of x plus 1. Whenever you're drawing an absolute value, first just ignore the absolute value. Let's just pretend I'm graphing y equals x plus 1. So that means it would have an, a y-intercept of positive 1. So let's just write here x plus 1. This is my y-intercept, and that's my gradient. Remember, y equals mx plus b. So my y-intercept is 1. My gradient is 1 also, so that means it's going to cross like this. This is 1, this is 1, or negative 1. And if I didn't have absolute values, it would go down like this. But I do have absolute values, so it reflects up and has this gradient here of actually negative 1. Okay, now let's see if I have another color around. And I docked my pen, never mind. I can use this textor. I'm going between negative 3, which is roughly somewhere here, and positive 2. So let's say that this here is negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2. So I'm going to find this area shaded in red. And now this area shaded in red is the area of two triangles. And areas of triangles are very easy to find out because they're right angle triangles. So here I have what? I have a length of base 2. So remember, this integral, which is an area, it represents an area, is going to be a half. Now, if I'm just this first part, it's going to be a half times the base length, which is two units, times the height length. Now, what's the height length? Well, this is like evaluating this line here. Let me draw it in red, actually. This line here is really the line y equals, now I have a negative gradient, so negative x, and it would cross my x, x, my y axis, sorry, at negative 1. So that's really the equation of this line here. So when I put in negative 3, I have negative of negative 3 minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. So this height is 2 here. So I have 2 there, plus a half times, now what's my base length here? My base length is 3 units, so times 3, times what's my height here? Well, this is the line, now it's the line y equals x plus 1. What's the height? Oh, sorry, the height is when I'm evaluating at x equals to 2, so 2 plus 1, which is 3. So, half times 3, times 3. So, I have, taking out a factor of a half, that's 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So, I have 13 on 2, and so my answer is 
um, C. And there's how you do that one. And the final part. Which expression is equivalent to 4 plus log in base 2 of x? Now, clearly I need to write 4 in terms of some log in base 2. And the reason I want to do that is because then I can use my log laws and combine them together to get something, hopefully, one of these four options. Now, how can I write 4 in terms of log in base 2? Well, if you think about log in base e of e, now we know that's 1, but it's 1 because it's e to the power 1. In the same way, I have log in base 10 of, say, 100. So that's going to be log in base 10 of 10 squared, because 100 is 10 squared, and we know that that's 2, because what does this thing really do? It just tells me what this exponent is going to be. So here I have to write log in base 2 of 2 to the 4, plus log in base 2 of x. Again, why have I done that? Because this number 4 is just telling me what this exponent should be. This function just tells me what this exponent should be. And since it's, we need it to be 4, I have to write 2 to the power 4. Now I can, can combine these because they are both in the same base. So I'm adding two separate logs, that's going to become a product. Log in base 2 of 2 to the power 4 times x. 2 to the power 4 is 16, so I have log base 2 of 16x. My answer is D, and I'm done.